The Tour de France is a race of monuments and anniversaries, constantly retracing its steps and paying its respects. Stage 15 2005 is one that's heavy with meaning for Lance Armstrong. It'll be 10 years ago tomorrow that his teammate Fabio Casartelli died on the Col de Porte d'Aspe. The following day, Armstrong stood with his teammates at the start and rode with them across the line at the finish in a group tribute. Two days later, he paid his own with a brilliant solo stage win. Lance Armstrong now looks to the skies as he comes home. He dedicates this stage to the teammate Fabio Casatelli. This one, Fabio, is for you. The last time the tour came this way in 2001, he did the same. He looks at the sky, memories again perhaps of Fabio Casatelli on a day this race crossed the Porte d'Aspe where his teammate died in 1994. On this, his last ever tour, expect to see the full force of Armstrong's will on show today. You know, Lance Armstrong is a man who takes most things personally, and I think he'll view any attempt by another rider to win the stage today as a personal affront. It's not just that he wants to honour his late teammate. That's a large part of it, of course, but Armstrong is sufficiently ruthless in his pursuit of overall victory in Paris not to want to jeopardise it for the sake of sentiment. No, it's also because this is far and away the hardest stage of the entire race, and as such, should be won by the strongest man. If that man is Armstrong today, his seventh tour victory could be secure. It's looking pretty secure already. Lance Armstrong has a lead of 1.41 over the man in second place, Michael Rasmussen, and it's Ivan Basso and Jan Ulrich in the positions in which they finished last year's tour, 2.46 and four and a half minutes back, respectively. Levi Leipheimer and Floyd Landis make it three Americans in the top six. There's the stage profile with the Porte d'Aspe, the first climb of the day. Then it's four first category climbs before the final one to the finish, which bears the special beyond category designation. Well, if Lance's intentions weren't plain enough already, they were spelled out today at the start in five letters. Fabio was a single word on the armband he pulled on. He and the rest of the field passed the Khazar Tele Memorial on the descent of the first climb, and by then, a group of 14 riders had broken away. As we join it, that has splintered with six men out front on the penultimate climb of the day, the Col de Val Laurent Azé, and it includes one each from the two big teams, George Hincapi for Discovery and Oscar Sevilla for Team Mobile. The remnants of the breakaway are scattered behind them, and their lead over the group containing Armstrong, Ulrich Basso and company is around 12 minutes with 26 kilometres and two summits still to go. Team Discovery Channel on the front. This time it's Jose Acevedo, the Portuguese rider from the squad who's decided he wants to whip up the place. But here is Alexander Vinokur. Off oh he's dear. coming. There'll be trouble now because this man will lift the pace. He never knows when to say enough isn't enough is enough. Alessandro, he's the champion of Kazakhstan, by the way. He's looking over, just seeing, and I think it's an acceleration. This is going to cause, I think, a depletion of possibly Discovery Channel again. Well, it's got rid of this man, number 12, Curini. It's got rid of Francis Moreau, oh, Christophe Moreau. Carino's, Carini's gone. Well, this is the pressure and the acceleration of T-Mobile. I wonder if he's trying to leapfrog over Andreas Claude and his own teammate, who's about a minute and a half in front of him in the overall classification. That's the first in discovery, or is it the second? That's Rubiera who's gone. Chechu Rubiera, job done for the day, and we're not going to have very many riders left with this pace, Phil, at the top of this climb. Let's move more and further forward. That's Moreau. You can tick them off now because this is the move to try and reach the leaders. It had to come on this climb because the last climb they will need to make the progress. Ulrich is poised and Armstrong is in the right position. Chris and watch out Mansebo on the far right. Chris Horner has gone. Discovery Channel have not quite lost all of their riders yet because Jose Acevedo is still sitting on the back of this group but only by the skin of his teeth. The Col de Val Laurent is proven to be the decisive mountain on today's stage. This is Cadell Evans now. He's also unhitched. He's refound Moreau. They're going to try and work together. It's going to be tough to get back. Alexander Vinokurov, uh, Jan Ulrich, Ivan Basso, and now Lance Armstrong saying something to Acevedo. But they haven't got rid of Rasmussen. They have not got rid of the man who lies in second place in the overall classification. Acceleration now from Ivan Basso. Ulrich responds. So does Lance Armstrong. There's somebody on the right here. I thought we saw Acevedo, but maybe I was wrong. Now, this is the acceleration from Ivan Basso looking over to see what kind of damage. You can see Acevedo actually disappearing in the distance, his job done for the day. And in fact, there's a gap here. Ulrich cannot hold the pace of, of Ivan Basso. 
but he gets the big diesel oh. engine going. Another kick from Basso. Armstrong must respond to this. And he's gone round Ulrich, and I'm not sure Ulrich has the power. These are the big three in the Tour de France. And now it is Basso and Lance Armstrong and Ulrich. He's struggling, but he's catching up. This is almost an action replay of yesterday. The three big men. Here is Karsten Kroon. He's been caught. And look at Basso. He wants to win here in the Pyrenees this afternoon. He's got Armstrong right on his wheel. And Ulrich again, Phil, because of that big gear, the massive gear that the German turns over, he cannot respond to these accelerations of the men who can climb mountains fast. Well, Basso is now trying to race himself into second place. This is Yaroslav Popovich. His job is done. He'll try to just stay in that white best rookie jersey now. This is the chaos on the climb of Val Laurent and Michael Rasmussen. His second place is now in serious danger. That's Eddie Mazzolini. He's high up in the overall classification. Started the day in 19th. He's gone off the back. But, you know, just looking through the chaos of the cars here, I can see that Alexander Vinokurov is still in contact with that small group. Two men now. This is the face. This is the mask. This is the big match day for Lance Armstrong. I knew and felt, Phil, this morning at the start he was going to do something special. He's been waiting for this to happen. Looks over his shoulder. He has the presence with him of Ivan Basso. And Ulrich is gapped. Well, uh, the way Armstrong looked there at Basso, he wants Basso to stay with him. He needs Basso at least till he gets to the last climb of the day. It's two against one just now. Ulrich has just got a fraction of a gap between him and Basso and Armstrong, but he won't give up. I think Jan Ulrich this year has got the best Here position he he's ever had at the Tour de France. He's got the best condition. He's prepared, but the problem is he's had an awful lot of bad luck. Philly crashed the day before the prologue. He had a nasty crash on a descent on the road down into Mulhouse, but he has suffered through it. He hasn't complained at all about his accidents, and he's still the third strongest man in the Tour. I've never actually heard Jan Ulrich ever complain, and he's had some serious criticism against him, but look at that. He showed us a great day yesterday. He's fought back into the picture again. Basso seen him come on, a little bit of an acceleration, just to try and hurt him once more. As Ulrich gets on, I think he's lost ground again. Well, Ulrich is a battler. This is the next group on the road. Vinokurov struggling to stay on the back. That's Leonardo Pipoli in front of him. Levi Leipheimer in front of him. Floyd Landis again. But Alexander Vinokurov, Phil, he has no fear at all. He doesn't care about what's happening in the race. All he wants to do is attack and create damage. Well, that's Vinokurov now sitting behind. That's Levi Leipheimer sitting behind Floyd Landis. Floyd Landis sits behind Rasmussen. Rasmussen is losing his second place overall. There is no doubt about that at the moment. As we're seeing the riders coming clear, this is an amazing break at the minute, but they're really turning the screw hard. They are really turning the screw hard. A lot of riders battling to try and get themselves back into this race. Francisco Mancebo is a long way back. He's the man who started the day in seventh place overall. But what is happening here is the toughest three men in the Tour de France are in the three premier positions. Ivan Basso, Jan Ulrich and Lance Armstrong are locked together in what has been a very private battlefield over the last three years. Ulrich is the man to hang on. Lance Armstrong is the man to try and fly. These three unbelievably superb athletes in the world of cycling. They have been rivals for years, and here they are, locked together in battle. All of them too proud to say, I'm tired and I've had enough. Well, you know what, Phil? It is actually almost a little bit sad to see this because this, I feel, is going to be the final showdown. The three great men who have dominated the Tour de France over the last few years, and someone's coming Mancebo. back there. Matt Sabo, yeah, chased by Landis, Rasmussen, Leipheimer, Leonardo Pipoli. Well, does anybody give up in the Tour de France? Apparently not, because they just suffer and try that little bit harder. Here is now Alexander Vinokurov trying to get back onto the group with Leonardo Pipoli just dead. This is Armstrong. Well, Armstrong's hiding nothing now either. He wants rid of these boys. There is nothing he can hide. There are no more teammates left to pace him. It's all basically him against El Ulrich and Ivan Basso. His face now is getting himself into that zone where he will concentrate. This is the kind of concentration that he applies when he rides time trials. And he rides time trials very fast. Let's not forget there are six riders somewhere up the road with a bit of debris in between as well. And these boys are riding at just over nine minutes now behind the leaders, which contains Hincapi and Michael Bogot Ferrero still. Here they are, chance to have a look at them. 
This is uh, Hinkapi sat at the back as he's done all day long. He's there for Lance Armstrong. He won't help. He won't help at all. He's just sitting there and waiting to see how the race develops. And I think the most important thing for Hinkapi is when it comes down to the end, what he wants to see is whether or not Armstrong comes back because he knows if Armstrong does come back, he will still be there to help him out. And think about that tactically. If this group of three riders manages to catch all uh, uh, Hing, uh, Hinkapi, well then Hinkapi's got himself into a nice tactical situation to help Lance. It's an incredible move and it's working so far. Michael Rasmussen here fighting for his second place podium in Paris. Ivan Basso has started the day one minute and five seconds behind him overall. And right now he's ahead of him by a few seconds. Landis has never ridden a Tour de France as good as this. Matt Sable has clawed his way back into the action. All of these riders are not going to give up without a fight. They are pushing themselves to the ultimate limit. Well, we're looking at the six leaders, and they've already lost a couple more minutes of their advantage because it's actually now just slipped down to nine minutes. And Hinkapi is still sitting there looking comfortable. Well, we're looking now at these riders, these six leaders who've been at the front of today's stage of the Tour de France since the 27th kilometre. They're inside of 500 metres to go to the summit, and they've still got a nine-minute advantage. Theoretically, on any other day, that should be enough, but I'm not sure that it is going to be enough here this afternoon because I think we are going to see an immense pursuit of the slopes of the Plada Day. Vinokurov has recovered. He's managed to get himself back into contact with Pipoli, Mansebo, Rasmussen. But Rasmussen here could be seeing his second place in the overall classification disappear. He started with a minute's advantage over Ivan Basso. And right now, he's going to have to do something special. He's lost 35 seconds of that. But we've still got an unbelievably difficult climb to go to the summit of Luzardiden. I should say Fladade. Pereira, he's the strongest rider in the group, but this man over on the left, Laurent Brochard, is the most tactically intense rider of the group. He knows about this area, he's raced and won here before in the past, 1997. He's looking to get himself points in the King of the Mountains classification, which he does, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him continue on the descent because he's also one of the top descenders in the sport. Hello, I'm Eric Decker, and after the break, there will be more to the front. Lance Armstrong, Jan Ulrich and Ivan Basso are climbing together towards the penultimate summit of today's stage. But ahead of them, six leaders are over it and facing the last climb and 20 kilometres to go. Life is all up from here and what a way to finish above saint laurie soulon You can sit in this little town and just look at this mountain and it would frighten the pants off you. And that's where we're going now after a day like this. 205 kilometres of torture. That was Vitaliati. He has been away in the break for ages. He's now coming back. The break, though, is around about seven and three-quarter minutes for the Armstrong group. There's only three of them. This is looks like uh, Andreas Cloden coming back to the group, recovering to try and pull him. No, this is Sevilla, who's actually trying to get himself back to the six-man leading group. He's had a hard time, Sevilla, here this afternoon as he gets down into that rather precarious aerodynamic position this actually helps you to pick the pace up to around about a hundred kilometers an hour if you're going downhill in a straight line as we are just now well he's made it back to the leaders and hats off to him it should be just in time to go off again when the climb of Plade Day starts but he'll be there into the town of Saint Laurie now it's quite a long way down to the valley first oh boy how fast did they just climb at that climb of Val Laurent and the three strong riders they were hiding no more. They came out and showed their strength. This Sevilla. is the twist, and that's quite a nasty descent here through the town, round the church, all Ve the way around the church. Very tricky, very precarious in the straights, though, you know, as we go at 18 kilometers to go, which is around about 12 miles of racing. In that straight just a few moments ago, we recorded a speed of 62 miles an hour. Not bad on a push bike. Well, I'm glad they slowed to get round the church. Armstrong, Ulrich and Basso here. The man behind is coming back from the breakaway, which is uh, Vitaliati. He won't be there too long, I don't think. Look at his face, though. He's trying to hang on to the elite of the world of cycling. This man is trying to hang on to second place overall in the Tour de France. And Michael Rasmussen with Floyd Landis, with Levi Leipheimer. They are the riders here now who are trying to get back on terms. This will be Eddie Mazzolini, and he's with Christophe Moreau. They're a little bit further down, but they might race back up to that group. 
they might do they might be able to take a few risks on the descent in fact it looks very much as if eddie mazzolini here has made contact with christophe moreau moreau could keep himself in the top 10 overall by the end of today but i shouldn't think there'll be any change at all for levi leipheimer and floyd landis because the only men in front of them in the overall classification are actually in front of them on the road there's the face of Christophe Moreau, once a winner of the prologue time trial in Dunkirk. His stage win was then in the Tour de France. He's had good form this year, the best we've seen him ride for an awful long time. He's still on the climb, don't forget, of the Val Laurent, as they all are, except the six men have gone over the top. Not far to the summit, though, for the Armstrong group. And Rubens Battagliati gritting his teeth. He's staying with them at the moment, which is amazing. Well, it's a great souvenir for that guy because he's not one of the great climbers of the sport. But what he will be able to say one day or another in his future is, I went over the summit of the penultimate climb of a Tour de France stage with Lance Armstrong when he was on his way to winning the title for his seventh time. But when they get to the Plata de Phil, he's going to pay for the effort that he's putting in here just to stay in contact with those three stars. Well, good chase by Moreau Mazzolini. I'll say Moreau Mazzolini is followed here. That's people there who's in the leading group. And so to Yanislav Popovic. So they're getting together. Meanwhile, up at the top, Ulrich goes over the top with Basso and Armstrong. They're over the top now. The Togliati still there. We're looking at Ivan Basso, we are looking at Jan Ulrich, the time gap is 7 minutes 40, and now they've got to make a big descent, and they'll be left with the climb of the Plata Day to try and reach the leaders. It's going to be very difficult, Phil, over these last 25 kilometres of racing to bridge that gap of 7 minutes and 40 seconds. It all now really depends on the freshness of the six riders in the front of the race. In fact, another man who's recovered rather well here to get back into this group is number seven there, Yaroslav Popovic. He had to do a lot of work in the early kilometres of this climb for Lance Armstrong, but he is very well defending his lead in the best young rider competition. He may well be the star of the future. Well, the most concerned rider here is the King of the Mountains leader, the Dane Michael Rasmussen, as he comes up towards the summit of the climb. And we'll do a quick time check on that for you if we can, but he's, uh, he's just over a minute behind overall, Ivan Basso. And Basso is already plunging down the mountain with Armstrong and with Jan Ulrich. Time to take a little bit of paper up the jersey there to stop the wind in there through the lycra as you go down at 100 kilometers an hour. Well, just look at this for a descent. This is an unbelievable descent. And actually, Rasmussen at the top of that climb, Phil, had lost himself one minute and five seconds. So actually, he's already lost second place overall to Ivan Basso. Hola, soy Oscar Sevilla. Volveremos al tour después de la publicidad. There it is, Paul. Ten kilometers to go. They're still clear. George Hincapi will be wondering what he should do shortly. He's going to have to take the responsibility for Team Discovery Channel. Oscar Pereira is the man who's been doing the majority of the pacemaking. We have to remember over the last couple of years, Hincapi has become somewhat of a climber, especially in the month of July, but he's never really been able to stay with a group until the final climb of the day. Here, I think with a seven and a half minute advantage, Phil, he's actually in a race winning situation. All of these men are extremely tired. It's really a question of survival. I can't see why they should be tired for. They've only crossed half of the mountains in the Pyrenees today. It has been an incredible day. How these guys do it after the way they rode yesterday. Look at this. Oscar Sevilla, who has been off the back, has decided the best method is to attack and see what happens. And he's got himself a gap. Well, Sevilla is a great climber. We've seen him in the Vuelta a España in the past. Let's not forget this man was the white jersey, the best young rider in the Tour de France. The strategy here is to try and get himself a stage victory if he can. He's not been riding well over the previous climbs, but if he can cause the other riders to panic, this may well be good for him. But look at the way Oscar Pereiro is coming back. Pereiro has been the instigator of this move. He's done the majority of the work, and sorry, Oscar, you're not having a win quite that easily. Well, that's going to hurt Oscar now because Pereira has taken up the race here and has gone straight over the top of Oscar Sevilla. I'm not sure whether this was planned to be quite so early, but Oscar Pereira has got himself a little bit of a lead. Bogart won't like it. Here comes Bogart. George is right behind him, Hincapi, and they've hooked up with Pereira. Now there are three. 
Now there are just three riders. Michael Bogart making the effort to get across to Pereira. Bros are there paying for all of his attacks. He's going to slip back to sixth place on the road. In front of him, Sevilla. In front of him, Calcioli. This is basically a water call here for Armstrong for the final climb of the day. Again, keeping himself topped up the energy levels and the liquid levels as much as possible. He is always worried about getting dehydrated on these very hot mountain stages. Back in the team car will be Johan Brunil. Now the next man to go back and look to take on board water will be Ivan Basso. This is the next group now getting bigger and bigger, containing Michael Rasmussen. But you know, Rasmussen at the moment is losing second place overall. Ivan Basso is in the ascendancy. Further up, still with seven and a half minutes advantage at seven kilometers to go. It's Oscar Pereira in the green and yellow of Fonac. The blue and grey is George Hincapie. Michael Bogard has won two stages in the Tour de France before. One of them on the outskirts of the Alps in uh, Aix-les-Bains, the other in the very heart of the Alps at the summit of La Plagne. And today he's looking to add one in the Pyrenees if he can. But this is going to be a serious battle between three men who must by now be extremely tired, having led the race for tw since the 27th kilometre. They've been at the head of affairs here for 170 kilometers. Looking further back, this is one of the riders who was in the break just a little area earlier. That is Piotr Cocchioli, the rider from Credit Agricole. And if you look at this climb, the way these riders are going up it, you get an idea of how difficult it is. Now, this is Basso launching the attack. He's got a gap now over Jan Ulrich. Armstrong is just saying there with Ulrich. Ulrich now, it's the attack from Armstrong. He's going across the gap. Well, look at that. Basso slipped away up the front, and Armstrong, with that incredible sprint he possesses when somebody hits him hard, has crossed the gap. He waited to see whether Jan Ulrich was going to respond, and once he saw that Ulrich didn't have that response, Ulrich couldn't go up to the wheel of Basso. He said, right, I'm going to go myself, and he has leapt across that gap again like a scalded cat. He's on the tail of Ivan Basso. These are the two champions of the Tour de France here this afternoon. Behind, everybody will have to ride in their own personal purgatory. Well, Ivan Basso took his chance well there. He gave it 100%. He's looking around to see how he's getting on. He looked the wrong way because the man he fears most is right underneath his armpit. And now Lance Armstrong has joined him. Basso would need a 2 minutes 47 ahead of Lance Armstrong to get the yellow jersey. Of course, he does get a little time bonus. It might make it a little bit less than that, but it doesn't matter because Armstrong is with him. But Basso just now is going to be confirmed at least in second place in the tour tonight. Jan Ulrich has been forced to come on alone as well. Bit of a story of the tour for, for poor old Jan. He's always alone. He's going to have to ride for himself here, just try and get into a rhythm because it's important for him. It's not really that much of a worry now, Phil, as to whether or not he's going to lose time on Armstrong and Basso. The important thing for him is to get time over Michael Rasmussen if he can because Ulrich, too, could be moving up in the overall classification. Look at Armstrong's face. I don't really see Ivan Basso getting rid of him, and I must really think back to the Giro d'Italia. I must question the team's logic in taking him to the Giro d'Italia when he could be rivaling Armstrong here for the win. Well, here we go, picking up riders from the breakaway. That's Heimar Zubeldia in front of Jan Ulrich. As we now see here, riders collapsing one after another, but these two, now they're like they're in the Pyrenees. Side by side, they come up. In fact, it'll be Isasi now that they're picking up, I think, here or Kamano perhaps, they were all up there originally. But look at that crowd on this climb of the Plata Day. Somewhere down there is the Tour de France, and it is Kamano, they've just, Ulrich has just passed, and Ulrich is gonna get in amongst it. Now these crowds have gotta stay pretty orderly here, and we don't want the United States making a mess of it either by running in front of Jan Ulrich. Maybe he's just trying to clear the way. The big two are trying to forge the gap. They're not doing very much to the leading group because the leading group is still well up the road because George Hincapie is still in contact. Three riders leading the race being chased here by two serious challengers, Ivan Basso and Lance Armstrong. So Oscar Pereiro, Michael Bogart and George Hincapie are still locked together in their lonely battle while further down the slopes there is a massive chase going on. 
And even Vina Kurloff is trying to get back in the action here now. He's somewhere on the mountain. I'm not sure where he is anymore now as he tries to cut his way from right. Man Sabo is trying to chase him down. We've just passed Jerome Pino. He's washed away. He was with the leading group. This is an incredible showdown now. Everybody is totally committed. Jan Ulrich is at seven minutes two off the lead now. Battle on battle. Well, hats off to Basso, but Armstrong is just sitting there. He can't take any risks. Hola, soy Oscar Pereiro y nos vemos en el tour de después de la publicidad. Inside five kilometers to go on the final climb of stage 15, and the lead group is up to four. Credit Agricole's Pietro Cauchioli has managed to get back on. Well, what a great battle this has been. This is Francisco Mancebo. He's faced a picture of pain here. He started the day in seventh overall. Inside five kilometers to go for the leaders. This is the leaders, or these are the leaders rather. And still a lot of work being done by Oscar Pereiro. Oscar Pereira is probably the best climber from this leading group, but they're going to have to pay very much attention to the man who wears number 103 there because Pietro Calcioli is a very good rider when it comes to these big mountain top finishes. He's finished high in the overall standings of the Giro d'Italia. Hincas P must be wondering what is happening. I'm inside of five kilometers to go and a mountain top finish. This could be one of the biggest surprises of the tour if Hincas comes up with the win. Well, behind, Hincapi's captain is coming, but he's not coming quick enough, I don't think. Six, uh, six minutes and six seconds to George, to uh, Lance Armstrong group. Here they are. And this has been a superb battle. Alan Davis is getting mixed up in this now as he comes back from the original breakaway. Boy, he's never been in this sort of company, three kilome five kilometers from the summit, Paul. He certainly hasn't. He will look across and he'll be able to throw that into his bag of memories too. Ulrich now, I think, starting to lose a little bit of time for because there is no car around that corner anymore. There is no sight of the two men who are locked together in their own personal battle. Now, this again is another move. This is Calcioli who's gone off the front. And this is the man who was dropped on the lower part of the climb and he came back and now he's going for it. This could be a huge boost for the Freddy Agricole team, he was brought in to be the man of the mountains for the overall, he's let them down in that respect, but what would they think of a win here? Well, here's the answer, Oscar Pereiro answers. Oscar Pereiro's come back, this has put George Hincapie into a spot of bother, but look how Hincapie responds, no he wants problem. the win here this afternoon, he has the freshest legs in what was originally a 14-man group, and Hincapie is right on the tail, if any of these guys want to win the stage this afternoon, they've got to get rid of Big George, because there's no Nobody, not nobody, is going to beat him in the sprint. Well, don't be surprised if George tries one of his own here because he's so strong, he's taken a leaf out of Lance Armstrong's book and just sprinted across the gap. Pereira might say to George, look, we've got to go. We've got the other two. Let's leave it to fight between ourselves. Pereira takes it up. George Hincapie follows. The other two have cracked Bogart as well. Well, that was a great response by Hincapi Pereira. Now, Phil, actually doesn't really know what to do. He knows the power of George Hincapi. You know, Hincapi's had a good season as they go inside of four kilometers to go. Hincapi's had three wins this year. Two of those came in the Dauphiné Libre just three weeks before the start of the Tour de France. It's going to be a tough job for the man on the right-hand side there to beat the man in blue and grey. For 10 years, George Hincapi has been running in the Tour de France. He has never won a stage. He's always unselfishly been at the side of Armstrong. That's why he's here. That's his raison d'etre. And now he's got the chance of a lifetime to win one for himself. Both looking back, they're both nervous, as you can see the banner there indicating the four kilometers to go point. And Hincapi is wondering, can I stay with this man? Because this man, in theory, on paper, is a superior climber to me, but that's not at the end of a long stage like this. Well, as we go back to Ivan Basso and Lance Armstrong, they're alone again. And this is another man who's been alone since the climb started, Jan Ulrich. But that car is just in front, and the other two are just ahead of the car. He's certainly not losing ground, but I don't think we can say he's catching up either. I think he's locked right now in his own personal battle. There's a huge crowd here on the slopes of Padade, and they knew something special was going to happen. But Michael Rasmussen now is starting to find his rhythm. He wants to keep second place overall. I think that might be just a little bit too far away from him, but he's still battling, Phil, to keep himself on the podium. 
Well, Armstrong at 5.42 now behind the two front runners. And uh, I think uh, Rasmussen is about a minute behind Ulrich. And he's trying to get rid of Vinokurov here as he's desperate now to defend that polka dot jersey. He needs, he's okay at the moment. He's holding third position in the race. I think it's fair to say he'll lose second. I think he will lose second unless he does something very magical before the end of this race here this afternoon, but he's in a strange position. Came to the tour to win a stage and win the polka dot jersey. He never thought he was going to be battling for a podium position. And it looks as if there's a spectator there. One of the Bass spectators got in front of the television. And uh, if you do get in front of a motorbike when the motorbike's going uphill, it can be rather dangerous. You know, just a few moments ago, there was a nasty accident when the motorbike camera behind the two leaders, Pereira and Hincapi, in fact, rode over the top of a spectator. But I have to say, Hincapi is looking very calm and collected, and he will get more excitement, Phil, as they get closer to the summit of this climb. Every kilometre that goes by, I think Hincapi is going to feel just that little bit more solid, and in the, he'll start to get himself into the skin of a winner. Further down the slope, though, Basso still working with Armstrong. Neither of these boys have cracked. They are not shirking their duty. They are getting on with it. Not far off our camera is Ulrich. Ulrich is actually only 22 seconds behind Armstrong and Basso. And going, look He's, at this. These, this part of the climb is actually starting to suit him. This is a very strange climb. It's a horrible climb because there are moments when it's steep. There are moments when it's flat. It actually suits the pure climbers because they are the guys who can change their rhythm. But for Ulrich, who's the powerful climber, he can use his big gears on the flatter part of the course. The crowd is ballistic here. They are cheering on everybody. They are probably hoping that Oscar Pereira is going to take the win. But if Hincapi takes the win, they shouldn't worry too much because he can speak Spanish too. Well, the gap back to Armstrong now is 5 minutes 22. He won't see them till the finish. These are the two riders making the waves up here. Look at this as they crash through the people from Spain. Number four, George Hincapi, 68, is Oscar Pereiro. Both deserve the victory, and they're going to take it to the line because nobody's going to catch them. And I don't think anybody's going to drop George Hincapi because he's getting the bit between his teeth. He can feel more confident. He is looking up there at the banners. He knows the finish line is getting so much closer. The two riders who are chasing a little further back are actually around about 30 seconds in arrears. We've just had the running of the balls in Pamplona. Well, this is the running of the Basques on the slope here of Luza of Plata Day. Well, a Spanish rider had to be in the frame somewhere, and he's not a Basque rider, but he's certainly Spanish, and that's a Spanish flag. And Oscar Pereira is riding on a tidal wave of noise here. Lance just checks over his shoulder to see if anybody is coming back. He couldn't possibly see in this crowd. You can't see further back more than about 100 metres because this is a wave of people just opening up to allow the riders to come through and then closing in behind them. As soon as they get that little bit closer to the finish, they will get inside the barriers and finally they will feel safe. But Hincapi now, Phil, must be thinking, what am I going to do? He probably never even looked at the race book to see what the finishing line looks at because he didn't think he was going to be here. Correct. Inside two kilometres for the leaders, five minutes, 21, the gap to Lance Armstrong and Ivan Basso. And now they are just slowing down for the first time. And Lan uh, Jan Ulrich continues to fight here. This is uh, Oscar Sevier, he's now picking up, who was originally with that breakaway. He slowed down. Can he help Ulrich? Well, he'll try and do what he can. He's probably given the information by his team manager. Wait for Jan, try and pace him, see if you can lift him up. Because it's not really important for Ulrich in this situation to catch the two riders in front. What's important is for him to put time between himself and Michael Rasmussen. Yep. After all, let's not forget Ulrich's worst performance in the Tour de France since 1996, his fourth. He doesn't want to be fourth again. He would like to get onto the podium this year with Lance Armstrong. Well, look at that face now. He's very pain. He's shouting at Oscar Sevilla, I think, to just lift it a little bit. This is further up the road. Look at the determination here now of Lance Armstrong and the grimace of pain on Ivan Basso. I don't think he's going to get rid of Basso too easily. He looks a bit sharp there as we go just a fraction further up the road and this road now is being looked on by hundreds of thousands of Spanish spectators and you can be absolutely certain everybody there with an orange t-shirt or an orange hat on wants the man in first place to win Oscar Pereira just look at these people just enough room for these two riders to get through they pull back at the last minute 
They must be deaf here with the decibels of the shouting here from the Spanish flags. Oscar Pereira has done all of the pacemaking, Hincapi all of the following, uh, but it won't be that way when he sees the town and the finishing line. We are now approaching the top of the Plata Day. We are looking for one kilometre to go of this remarkable day in the saddle. Hincapi losing it a bit there, one kilometre to go to the summit, that's about one kilometre to go to the finish, and there is the Flam Rouge. They have finally Phil reached safety, the safe haven of the barriers. They've got a thousand metres to go. Hincapi looks over his shoulder, watch the situation. Is Cocchioli coming back? Well, George, he's not coming back. The winner is going to be either of these two riders we're looking at. Green and yellow is Pereiro for Spain. Blue and grey is Hincapi for the United States. Pereiro has been obliged to lead all the way. He's been carried up here by the shouts of his countrymen who have come over the mountains from Spain to look for a Spaniard to win. Now the pressure is on. George, of course, speaks fluent Spanish, but that's as close as he'll get. He is from the United States. He is an American, and he can't believe he's in a position to win now. Lance won't be coming up. He's five minutes, 25 seconds behind at the moment. Incapi Phil is looking right now at winning one of the legendary stages of the Tour de France. We've been over six mountain passes here this afternoon. He is in an ideal position to take the victory. He's got the explosive sprint, but when you've been away for so long, there is all is a doubt in theory there is no man in the here, here around who should be able to beat Hincapi well I don't think Paul since 1999 any of Lance Armstrong's teammates have ever won a stage in the Tour de France and this is about to change I think surely he's got enough left now because he's had the passengers ride ever since they broke away after 27 kilometers there were 14 there are now two, and still Hincapi is behind. He looks powerful, he looks relaxed, and now he knows they're getting slowly but surely to the finish. He's in the ideal position, he has to make sure he's in the right gear. Pereira gets out of the saddle, he is pacing Hincapi, but Hincapi is looking now like a man who is tense. He's looking like a man who is ready to pounce as they come up. They haven't seen the finish line yet, but Hincapi has got the explosion. I just hope he doesn't make a mistake. The pressure, the pressure now as Hincapi is waiting to see where it is. Oscar Pereira responding to the crowd, he's sure he will have no answer, having led all of this way. Hincapi is going to make this a formality, Pereira takes him wide, it's still a long way to go. It is long and interminable, the 1,000 metres at the top of a mountain like this, there are 300 metres to go, Oscar Pereira opens up the gap, but Hincapi's ready. Hincapi goes at 200, and now there'll be no answer for Pereiro. This is going to be yet another memorable moment in the life of this American team. Lance Armstrong, when he can't win, why not send up George Hincapi to finish off a perfect day of tactical copybook reading. And George Hincapi, after 10 years in the Tour de France, finally gets a victory, and he cannot believe it. George Hincapi, Tour de France stage winner, Plata Day, 2005. After 10 years of trying, Oscar Pereiro crosses the line. 10 years of trying for George Hincapi, and he gets himself his first ever stage win. Phil, since 1999, all he's ever done is ride as a dedicated teammate to Lance Armstrong. Today, he's opened up the copybook for himself. Behind Hincapi and Sevilla, Calcioli, Bogard and Brochard came in one after the other. And behind them, Armstrong and Basso were still climbing together. These two have raced one-on-one -on -one all the way up the mountain. They have thrown their best punches at one another. Now they're going to cross the line together to live to fight another day. And what a day this was between these two riders. Ivan Basso deserves that place. Five minutes and four seconds down. This is the arrival of Jan Ulrich up towards the finish. Looking for an eighth place if he comes round. Uh, Sevilla, 5.45. What a happy day this is for the team Discovery. And coming up behind Jan Ulrich in the distance, there he is, is Michael Rasmussen. If you deserve to keep your lead, then you do now, because he will conserve third place tonight in the Tour de France. That is a show of defiance, if there has been one. Well, that's a show of defiance, Phil, by a man who said he came to the Tour de France with two objectives. The two objectives were to win a stage, he did that, and to win the King of the Mountains classification. He's well on his way to doing that. 
but by catching up with Jan Ulrich in the final 500 meters of this stage, he is actually going to keep himself right up there in third place overall at the end of the day. What a ride, and here comes Rasmussen as well. The question for Rasmussen was how much time he'd lost, not to Hincapi and the other breakaway riders who filled the top five places, but to Ivan Basso, who finished sixth, a place ahead of Lance Armstrong. Basso and Armstrong stopped the clock at five minutes and four seconds behind the winner, both taking time off Ulrich, and Basso a significant one minute 28 faster than Rasmussen. Other men suffering possibly substantial time losses were the two Americans lying fifth and sixth. Levi Leipheimer came in 13th, nearly eight minutes down, and Landis another minute and a half after him. Two slightly happier Americans were having a little pre-urine sample celebration for the cameras. Not the win Discovery were planning, and not one that's ever happened before in Lance Armstrong's previous six tour wins. But George Hincapie was finally in the limelight, on the podium, and then into the post-race interview scrum. George, so many years in the saddle denied that feeling. When it finally came, what was it like? Uh, it was just shocking, you know. Was, I couldn't believe it. I knew that uh, I knew that I was strong today, but coming across the line and winning a mountain stage in the Tour de France is just uh, really a dream come true and unbelievable to me. <laughs> so many times, Lance Armstrong has stood here where you're standing now and answered our daft questions. Uh, what's he said to you about the whole experience of winning? You know, I haven't really even spoken to him. He just said congratulations. He was very happy. He gave me a big hug, uh, but we haven't had a chance to talk yet. <laughs> Still out on the road were men who hadn't had the breath to talk since 11 o'clock in the morning. The green jersey tour Hushoft rolled in with a group 36 minutes behind Hincapi, and it was nearly three quarters of an hour before the autobus carrying Robbie McEwen and Stuart O'Grady struggled home. And once they'd all been counted, this is how things looked. Armstrong still first, of course, with the same lead he had this morning over Ivan Basso, 2 minutes 46. The difference is that Basso is now second, having overhauled Michael Rasmussen. He slips to third, his deficit to Armstrong now 3 minutes 9. Ulrich remains fourth, but nearly six minutes behind now. Francisco Manthebo leapfrogs Levi Leipheimer into fifth. Lloyd Landis is out of the top six now and just a few seconds ahead of Alexander Vinokurov, while Armstrong's teammate Yaroslav Popovich is up to 12th. Well, he won't admit it for fear of tempting fate, but barring illness or injury, this site is going to be repeated now all the way to Paris. And every day, Ned will be at the bottom of the podium steps to speak to him. Lance, your, your progress through the big mountain stages on this tour has been so serene. I wonder if you've even had to push yourself right to the limit yet. Yeah, it, it's hard. I mean, with the heat and with the distance, six, six plus hours today, with, with again, temperature in the, in the 30s, it's so hard to, to race. And, it, and I, I, I believe the days like that, you have to just be regular and be calm and, and be patient because otherwise, you know, the, the, the heat will come back and bite you. Sure, the mountains were steep, the sun was hot, but your competitors, have they really offered the challenge that you thought they would? Yeah, yeah, they have. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it, it, even if it's uh, even if it's not a sprint to the finish line, it's still a challenge, and it's still uh, it's still nerve-wracking. It's still to me, it's still it's still exciting. I still get butterflies. I still get nervous. So, so I, I have to say so. The stage didn't work out the way it was supposed to be scripted. But Chris, have we started to see the podium take shape now? I think that was pretty much the major battle took place today. They're starting to see quite sizable gaps developing between the riders, and even a long time trial, the one that's yet to come, is unlikely to separate them much further. Lance looks good for his seventh in a row. Basso's looking comfortable in second. What about Rasmussen? Can he Hold up Rasmussen is uh, he's going to do a really good time trial. He didn't do so great in the first time, 174th, I think. So he's going to have to produce the time trial of his life. But he's got a reasonable amount of security there. It's going to be an interesting one. Now then, we were running a competition of our own yesterday. If you remember, John Peters had emailed in offering to pay £100 to charity if Paul Sherwin could get through the stage without saying unbelievable or unbelievably. Well, we reckon he did. So £100 on its way from Mr Peters. We're going to match that and give £100 to the charity of Jeff Thomas, who, as you know, is riding the entire route of the tour this year to raise money for leukaemia research. Right, that's about it from here. It's the rest day tomorrow, but we will be back to recap all the stages that have taken place through the Alps and the Pyrenees. We're on at 7 o'clock here on ITV2 and 11.30 over on ITV1. Then on Tuesday, it's back to the normal routine for stage 16, and they're not out of the Pyrenees yet, the riders. They've got a couple of climbs to get over on the road to Poe. We'll have that for you at 7 o'clock. Should be another day, good day's racing. In the meantime, Lance Armstrong is still without a stage win, but it's
it looks as though he's wrapped up his seventh straight tour victory. Good night.